Today we've got a cooler that's warm. That ain't good. Got here, fan's not running. Sight glass was showing empty. So now we're gonna search for a leak, see what we can find. Something down there don't like. Must be a big old monster leak for it to be going off this far away. The field piece one's a little screwy compared to a D-Tech. I had a D-Tech before and it didn't act as weird as this one does. This one just always seems like it has to be taken away, has to wait extra long. If it comes down to it, we're just going to get the H10 out. When in doubt, get it out. Alright, I isolated that up there and started scanning around, but I found the real leakers right here. She never lets you down. You can see some oil being sprayed out. Can't tell where. Yeah, it's leaking away from something. Look at that. You can see it leaking right there. Alright, got the pressure switch mounted up. Um, had to pump it down. The uh, valve that was there they put a uh, T in there that doesn't have a depressor on it, so there's none in there. So I had to put it into a timed off defrost, which shut the solenoid valve, was able to pump it down. We're going to put some uh, nylog on the back side of our flare nuts, tighten it up, then we'll adjust the pressure in. Need to remount the fan cycle switch back to where it belongs. Didn't see no leaks on that. And uh, then recharge this. Need to find out what refrigerant it is. It's got PoE oil, but it's not marked. We did get the uh, low pressure switch put in there. We got a, uh, we use split, well it's regular tubing, I think uh, quarter inch, eighth inch, and then we split it with a razor knife, and then uh, wrap that around our capillary tube there for the control. That way it helps protect it from vibrating and then uh, breaking loose. Uh, we're just slowly getting it in here, and then once we do, like I've mentioned multiple times before, we'll add an extra 10 to 15% to that total amount to get it set up for a winter charge. This has a fan cycle control, does not have a headmaster control, and uh, it is obviously outside. Our total weight in the system is 6 pounds 10 ounces. Grand total that comes up to 106 ounces. 106 ounces plus 15%, 60 more ounces. So we added an extra pound. As of right now, the superheat back here at the actual compressor is 20 degrees. The line is probably at least 25, 30 foot long. So we're looking good so far. Our sight glass has been staying full. We'll go ahead and add that extra pound. Then we'll go down and check our TD across our evaporator. Uh, time clock set correctly now. And uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this thing up. It's just in a little bit of a hard spot to get to. She's dropping in temperature pretty quick. Looks to me like it's feeding pretty good. Cooler's pretty old. Coil's about, about ready to go next. The compressor was just changed earlier this year, so this thing's already been running on POE oil for a while. Alright, we're 
fine tuning the uh, fan control in. I've got to mount that once I get it back into place. I'm bringing the fan on about 108 to 110 saturation, which is about 250-ish. And I'm shutting off about a 90 area. Every chart I've ever seen has always told me that everything's based at 100 degree saturation temperature. I'm sure there's some that might be a little different out there, but it seems to have worked for me all these years. Uh, so it should shut off when it hits down to about 90. My superheat's staying pretty steady, uh, 17 on average. And then my saturation on my suction's been right in there. Yeah, it's right out about 90 area. And uh, we're running about a 19 degree of app, which will swing a little bit with this. And it's pretty warm in there. So those, those are gonna drop. But that's a pretty, uh, pretty basic, simple call here. Basically, we had a leak on the low pressure control, unidentified refrigerant. It has POE oil. The cooler's very old. So at this point, with it already having the POE oil in it anyway, and you are uh, just converting it, and that way it's cheaper than R22 for the customer, and uh, everybody wins. Today we have a TXV to change out, so we've got it, uh, the 3 8 is doing the recovery. Got our uh, ports ready to go there, and uh, we're do, making use of the uh, cool presser from uh, Subco. This thing's pretty nifty. Puts a solid beam of water pretty much everywhere, all over the drum. We're doing 410A, and uh, we're able to keep our pressures down to so make a quick recovery. Uh, it's designed to cool the compressor. If you have a compressor that's uh, overheated, you can stick it right on top there, just like that right there, and that gives you a solid stream of water all the way across. It has a magnet built into it, but uh, it's a lot easier than holding it with a uh, hose. It's magnetic. The hose is a little heavy, but it uh, works out great for this. Uh, I've got a cooler for it, but this here will work just fine for me. This is the cool presser. It can be picked up uh, at your local supply houses or online. It's made by Supco. Uh, link uh, in the description down below. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to check down below at the links section. You'll find the email and all the tools that I use are all listed on there.